All right, so today we're going to be looking at this, the Deluxe Airbrush Set by uh, Harbor Freight. This will work with any airbrush though, so it's just the fact that we are going to make a conductive fluid that goes through this thing, and we're going to test it out, and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so we got mm, a nice little jar. It's pretty cool. This whole thing costs $19. So even if this experiment fails, uh, yeah, it doesn't cost that much. And if this thing breaks, uh, it's just 20 bucks. All right, cool. So I did a fair amount of airbrushing when I was a kid. So this is going to be really easy. This thing does not come with a hose, by the way. So you have to buy the hose separate. Uh, the hose is seven dollars. All right, there we go. Got to pump up the airbrush station. All right, so you might say, hey, there's a magical formula for this stuff, and there's not. Um, so all conductive uh, powder, graphite, is not created equal. And it's all based upon how fine the mesh is, how pure the graphite is, and how all these little factors come into play. So whatever graphite that you find, you'll have to test. There's no absolute formula for this stuff because there's no uh, actual standard to producing graphite powder. The fact is they can pretty much cut it with key litter if they wanted to. So, add graphite powder. I would find a container that has a marble in it, so there's a marble at the bottom of this. And I'm using uh, my favorite ink, Speedball. I start out with about 50-50 combination of these two. Put on the lid, shake it up. Now graphite will make it so this stuff dries 100% faster than normal, so that's the only bad thing about an airbrush. It will probably dry in the airbrush. So the idea here is probably not use this bottle for distribution. This one's going to be for cleaning. So I'm going to fill this one with a very inert formula called rubbing alcohol, and that's going to be my cleaning for it. Can't use water because Indie ink actually is waterproof. Um, there's really no solvent either, and I probably wouldn't ch uh, trust a solvent with this gun. So rubbing alcohol is probably the only thing I get. Uh, you can do a detergent, but then what will happen is it'll mix into the airbrush and probably um, make the ink not dry well on later applications. All right, so I don't have a really good regulator on my air compressor. This is probably going to be a little, little strong. Pretty cool, actually. So this is just rubbing alcohol. Cool, yeah, that's very strong. Okay, so what we're going to do is find a piece of glass. I always use the same type of glass, a clean piece of microscope glass. I found this uh, place on Amazon that you can actually get wire ones. Put a link below. 
It doesn't really matter though. All right, so the idea here is to just add a little bit to this cup. It looks like this cup has one bad feature. Um, it's not like a Pache or an Awada. It has to have a certain level in order to work. So the, the hole doesn't go all the way down. Okay, so. If this works, I'll go get a regulator. All right, not bad. Here's the thing. You're spraying graphite. I'm wearing a mask, by the way but uh, any graphite powder in the lungs is totally horrible, so please wear a mask, respirator, whatever you have available. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then we're going to measure the conductivity of it to see how well it holds up. So as soon as I get done with that, I, I'll clean it out. So the first test you need to do after you spray it is the carding test, which is basically taking 0000 steel wool and just take and go like this to the area and make sure light can't pass through it. Um, that is an amazing test when it comes down to it so that you can gauge how well the graphite is stuck using the bonding agent, which is just the India ink. Now you do not need to, let's say if you had an object, uh, card it. You do not need to go in and scuff it up. Uh, this is just to test the adhesion level. So when I do measure the conductivity in the next part, I will choose an area that is not carded. All right, so to measure conductivity on this stuff is very easy. You, know, you don't have to scuff up the area by the way, that's just to show the adhesion level, right? So, just choose an area that's not scuffed up after you play around a little bit, and then grab your multimeter and put it in ohms. Resistance, see the little horseshoe? Choose that. Okay, and then make sure your common is plugged into common, and then your lead wire is running onto the ohm. So this is hooked up to ohm on this side. So now, uh, just to show you, you, just touch the two leads together, watch what happens, boom, should go to zero. Okay, so now what we want to do is just choose one centimeter, okay, one centimeter of space that's not scuffed up. And choose it like that okay and then we'll look at the multimeter at the same time and then kind of gauge it in different areas so what you're looking on average is in the ohms range if you look here, 134 ohms, okay, uh, not K. So what we want to do is stick within the range of like, I would personally, in my humble opinion, stick in the range of 400 ohms all the way up to zero, okay. Those are good ranges for conductivity. If it starts climbing into the K range, 1,000 ohms, uh, then you're going to have a very, very slow plate.
it can be done, but it's going to be very slow. Alright, so that's an easy way to show connectivity. Now, if it fails, let's say it fails on average, then you add more graphite, just a little bit, and repeat this test over and over again until you get, on average, into the ohms range of things. So this is a product called PB Blaster Dry Graphite Lubricant. Okay. So uh, I've seen a lot of this being used in the forum, and what I wanted to do was show you the test on this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray the same piece of glass using this, let it dry, do a conductive test, and also do a card test on it which is basically scraping it. First off, this is kind of how it goes on. It's very uh, reflective. So I'll throw it or put it off to the side and let it dry. All right, so I had to do about three coats on here to get it to um, Kind of like a thickness that light didn't pass through, but it's still got light passing through a pretty, pretty significant amount. Let's see if I can. Uh, that's a dead battery. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if you hold it up to the light up there, you still got light. So let's let's go and do the card test. So we're gonna card it, and it completely wipes off. All right, so the adhesion level definitely is in there because it's not a paint, it's an actual um, lubricant. So there's no catalyst, there's no bond, there's no colloid there. All right, so let's go into power, check its ohms. centimeter part and uh, 181k so it's not even in the lower ohm range it's in the kilo ohm range and then where it got touched it completely came off so what I wanted to convey here is I knew this was garbage to be honest with you and I see this all the time being used, but really, if you look at it, it's got some good and bad stuff in here that should not be in a tank. Um, so if you've been using this and it works for you, that's awesome, but you're kind of probably going down a, a road that you don't want to go down sooner or later um, with things being in your tank that shouldn't be in there. Uh, the And it definitely doesn't have the adhesion level that this stuff I showed you how to mix does and I know it's really easy and convenient that it comes in a can you don't have to have an airbrush you could just kind of like go at it that's that's one thing but personally I would stay away from this product don't put this stuff in your tank just in my humble opinion so I hope you liked this video you can see the and you can see the resistance value wasn't all that good either compared to the other one. Um, I hope you enjoyed both variations of this, and have a good one.